This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. It's a beautiful morning. Good morning, everybody. This is Deep South Dining on MPB Think Radio. Malcolm White here with Carol Puckett. Good morning, Carol. How are you? Good morning, Mal. What's up? It's a beautiful morning. It's a beautiful morning. Well, you know, it's summertime. It's nice and warm out there. Uh, and so what better time to talk about ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Oh, you were so right. Uh, have you made any ice cream this summer? Well, Kara made uh, some, of home, of course, some homemade ice <laughs> cream peach ice cream, which is in our freezer as we speak. She makes a custard, and then uh, we got these great uh, peaches from up in Pontotoc County, Mississippi. And she made a delicious uh, peach ice cream. Uh, But I eat ice cream almost every day. I generally eat an ice cream on a stick, like a vanilla ice cream with chocolate, usually with almonds. There are three or four brands of those that I like. Uh, That's kind of my go-to treat. What about you? Well, Malcolm, of course, you have the kind of body that can take ice cream every day. That is not the case for me. It's it's still a treat, but um, I want to wish my mother, Dorothy Puckett, happy ice cream month. Uh, When she turned 80 on her 80th birthday, she said, well, I'm going to eat ice cream every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> and you know, she had always been you know, worried about dieting and figure and health and not having too much cholesterol. And so for the past 10 years, she has eaten ice cream every day of her life. In fact, I was rocking on the front porch with her last night as she was eating. Maybe it was Bluebell's Millennium. Yeah, there were uh, several people uh, who responded oh. to your post who talked about that. Yeah. Bluebell Millennium. Yeah. So happy ice cream month, Mom. Yeah, D. Rowe, happy uh, ice cream month to you. And uh, keep on rocking and keep on eating that frozen treat. And you know, what we about, ha- uh, go well, go ahead. Uh, I was I'm just, just going to say fruit. Fruit. But, go yeah, ahead, about fruit. This idea of of local fruit, which we have an abundance of, and and blending it into our uh, frozen treat uh, known as ice cream. I love, my grandparents, uh, my grandfather in particular, loved ice cream. And whatever fruit was in season, that was the flavor we had. If it was uh, time for the Ponchatoula strawberries, we would load up the car, drive to Ponchatoula, and come home with stacks and stacks of flats of fresh Louisiana strawberries, and we would put them up, we would freeze them, and we would make ice cream with them. And the same was true for peaches uh, and and sometimes pears as well. And blueberries and blackberries. That's right. was right. Was this down in Wiggins, Mississippi, for chance? It was in Wiggins, Mississippi. Uh, Did you, per chance, have a White Mountain hand crank ice cream freezer? We had a hand crank uh, ice cream freezer. I do not remember the brand name, but I do remember the pain <clears throat> that it that it took to create this magnificent treat. And we would take turns. You know, it, it, Hal would crank a while. He'd get tired. I'd crank a while. I'd get tired. Larry Allen, my cousin, would crank a while. My grandfather uh, would crank a while. But it was a it was a family effort, and it would take a good bit of the afternoon. My grandmother would cook the custard on the stove in the kitchen, bring it outside. We would have the old ice cream, rock salt, and the crushed ice. And it was an elaborate and all-consuming family enterprise that resulted in this joyful bliss known as homemade ice cream. Well, same was going on at my grandmother Todd's in Hattiesburg. And luckily, there were six children in my family. So we had plenty of people to crank, but it was like, you know, painting Aunt Polly's fence in Tom Sawyer. It's like, <laughs> oh, who's going to get to crank the ice cream first? And, then and the you ice- know what I, rem- what I remember was this strategy. Because if you started out cranking really hard, 
you would burn out in no time. But if you paced yourself, you could crank for some time. And uh, I remember going through this mental gymnastics of do I hit it hard and crank it hard and burn out quick or do I sort of stretch it out anyway? Well, I always wanted to be first, being the oldest. (laughs) I would would knock them all out of the way to get the first crack at it. And I don't know about at your house, but what about licking the dasher or when the dasher came out? Look, you know, we would yeah. fight over the dash. Yeah, yeah. So it had to be parsed out. You know, there were two paddles or dashers. Yep. So if it were only Hal and I, of course, we would split them. But if the other cousins were there, oh, well, a, a real ruckus would break out um, oh, yeah. over that. And it was kind of like who got to lick the can of condensed milk. Yeah, that after was another it was, thing. After it was poured into the custard. Now, that was, to me, more important than who got to lick uh, the, the paddles was who got the can after the condensed milk was used to make the custard. Well, I'm willing to bet that your ice cream freezer was made by White Mountain in Vermont. That was the big thing uh, that was used back then, the, the hand crank. And it's like a hand crafted with wooden slats. Yeah, oh yeah. And they, yeah, and they they still make them today. And when I owned the Everyday Gourmet, I was very committed to having the old fashioned ice cream, you know, ice cream freezer. And you know, would order two or three every year. And you know, I've I've gone soft, and I now have an electric White Mountain ice cream freezer. There's no more hand cranking for me. Same here. Ours is electric. It's not a white mountain, but uh, I think it's a Cuisinart. But either way, uh, you know, Kara makes a beautiful custard. We pour it over in there. You, you freeze the, the container first, right? Oh, this is modern. Oh, okay. Well, we, we take this sort of container out, put it in the freezer, freeze it. Then you put the custard into that and you turn it on. And, it, and it, it, this, this frozen vessel uh, it, it ends up making the ice cream hard and frozen and and good to eat. Here's a question for you. When it comes to soft serve, and, and of course, there are lots of kinds of ice cream. There's gelatos and sorbets, and we'll talk more about that later. But when it comes to soft serve, the, the question is cup or cone? Cup. I'm cone. I knew it. <laughs> I, just, I knew it. Um, and particularly out by the, the, uh, out by the swimming pool, you know, cup is easier. Cone sometimes gets wet. Uh, but either way, I love uh, an ice cream cone. And as a kid, you know, we would drive to wherever there was a dairy freeze or a tasty freeze or, a you know, dairy what, a, a, a dairy queen, a dog and suds. Um, there were a bunch of these, uh, a frosty top root beer. There were a bunch of these drive in, drive up, uh, um, hamburger, hot dog, ice cream places uh, that existed all over the landscape of the Deep South. There was one in Hattiesburg. There was one in Gulfport that we would drive to. But we would always, you know, eat eat a meal, and then the treat was uh, the soft serve ice cream. And the question always was, cup or cup cone? cone? Cup or cone? Yeah, and, and and of course your parents want you to go with cup because it doesn't drip all over the back seat of the car and drip all over your hands and arms and put your gooey little fingers on the you know car windows. But I got so much out of the cooking and coping group when we put out a call and said we we're going to be talking about ice cream. Just so many memories, and one from that day and time was Howard Johnson's. Yeah. which was, uh, I guess, a motel, and at one time it was the largest restaurant chain in America. And travelers, you know, you would go to, they, we called it Hojo, but right. to the Hojo, when you're, when you're driving from city to city, your parents would always say, okay, if you're really, really good, we'll stop at Howard Johnson's and get ice cream. And they had 28 flavors. Yeah, and but what was, about what about Baskin Robbins? This was pre Baskin Robbins. I know. 
And the owner of Bas- of Howard Johnson said he thought he had come up with every flavor in the whole world. And then bingo, there you go, Baskin Robbins. They came along. How many flavors did they have? That's a, that's a question for our listeners. <clears throat> if you know how many flavors Baskin Robbins featured, give us a call and Carol will we'll give you a prize. <laughs> oh, thanks, Malcolm. <clears throat> All right. So uh, before we went on the air, uh, Java was actually asking us a, a question that relates to generational and age differences. And he wanted to know, did these places, the mythology of the ice cream parlor really exist? Uh, and of course, Carol and I are old enough to, to remember that they did, in fact, exist. And they were places where people gathered for a sundae or a banana split or an ice cream cone or a malt or a milkshake. Oh, yeah. They were real, all right. All right, we're well, going to take Java, a break. Well, yep, yep, yep. just such a sweet young thing. Yes, he that is. His, his reference was, hey, Malcolm and Carol, was it like it was in the movie Grease? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's his, his, his generational... Um, his cultural touchstone. That's right. Well, we oh, all have it. John and John Travolta dancing through the ice cream shop. Well, ice cream uh, can can certainly uh, bring on a lot of great memories. If you have one about ice cream, making it, eating it, sharing it, uh, your favorite ice cream, give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, we're going to talk more and more and more about ice cream and ice cream recipes. Carol's got a ice cream in a bag recipe that does not involve hours and hours and hours of cranking. And so we're going to talk about all the different kinds of cream, uh, all the different memories and the places that we enjoy all across the state of Mississippi to get a good ice cream. We'll be back in a minute after a short break. This is Deep South Dining with Carol Puckett and Malcolm White. I'm Allison Walker, the lady auto mechanic, host of AutoCorrect. If you're enjoying this podcast, try my podcast, AutoCorrect. We help steer you in the right direction with your car problems. Find me on any podcast platform or at autocorrect.mpbonline.org. You're tuned to Deep South Dining right here on MPB Think Radio. Malcolm White here with Carol Puckett. This is the show all about the Southern flavors and the culture thereof. And there is no greater flavor than the flavor of ice cream, Carol. There is not, Malcolm, and I was really sorry that that break wasn't long enough for me to go to the refrigerator and get some <laughs> of the, <laughs> the bourbon vanilla ice cream that I bought Ooh. in Whole Foods last night. Just bourbon practicing, vanilla? Mm. Just practicing for the show. It's a little early in the morning, but it was just a hint of bourbon. Excellent. It seems, quite frankly, that there are very few fruits, liquors, flavors that can't be incorporated into ice cream. There used to be a day when, you know, Baskin Robbins and Howard Johnson's thought there were only 20 or 30 flavors, but the truth is it's unlimited. Whatever fruits, whatever uh, uh, sort of uh, ingredients you have around the house, if you're making a custard or making an ice cream base, everything goes and anything goes. And, And the more and more interesting I think, I mean, Ben and Jerry's has gone off the charts with their ice creams. And, and a lot of the posts on co- cooking and coping were really exotic flavor mixtures. Yeah, and at some point, uh, we need to talk about savory ice creams, too, because that's really a big deal now. But I think okay. we have a couple of callers. and We do. Uh, we have uh, Heather calling in from the River City of Vicksburg. Hey, Heather, how are you? I am great. I'm absolutely great, and you're making my mouth water. Talking about fruit, I make a blueberry sorbet out of my own blueberries, but you have to sieve it all anywhere from eight to ten times to get that super, super smooth, absolutely blue-black blueberry uh, sorbet, and it's wonderful. But I'm calling about Baskin-Robbins. Oh, okay. Do you know how many flavors they had? 31. 
And wow, we have a yeah. winner. <laughs> well, 31 flavors, and I was lived in California at the time where the very earliest, and now I'm giving away my age, very earliest Baskin Robbins were, and in their uh, little stores, they had giant murals up on the wall with pictures of one of the owners, and I never knew his name, but probably Baskins or Robbins, but also... <laughs> right, right. Good guess, Heather. Good guess. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Hey, come on, it's early. Uh, but also with gorgeous pictures of his granddaughters out in, you know, some pastoral setting, and there were cows in the background, of course, black and white. They also had a flavor that was only out twice that I know of, and it never came back, and it was long before the interest in coffee, but it was called espresso, and it actually had coffee grounds in it. I happened to have mm. lost it. Well, oh, no, it was great. It was great. I loved it, but it never came back. So that's my Baskin Robbins story. Well, let me ask you something, Heather. Where exactly in California was were you at that time? The store, the store was uh, in Riverside, California, in a little arcade off of Brockton Avenue. Yep. Well, so. while you were talking, of course, I went to Google, oh, good and you. Baskin Robbins was founded in 1945 by brothers-in-law Bert Baskin and Irv Robbins. And they merged their respective ice cream parlors, and it was in Glendale, California. So you were I in the it. epicenter, the epicenter well, little, of Baskin Robbins. But you know, they really didn't go. How can I say? They didn't start having their little stores, and they weren't very big to begin with. You know, you kind of walked into a large hallway, but you had this long line of ice cream. And it was a huge deal to drive to a Baskin Robbins. My dad practiced in Riverside, so we were right there. But it was long awaited, even in the huh, late 50s, maybe. Wow. Yeah, that was before it got here. That's yeah. yeah that was that that was in their very early days before they were a franchise. I don't mind. Well, Heather, thanks so much days. for listening awesome. to our show, and thank you for calling and being our winner today on the Baskin Robbins uh, quiz. <laughs> I'm sure we'll come up with some kind of uh, treat to send you. Java, if you could get her mailing address, we'll send her a, a hat or a T-shirt or some oh, kind of fun thing. But we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Keep listening. All right. Uh, we also have uh, another caller. Uh, on the line, uh, I think calling all the way from Louisiana, our sister state. Uh, Timothy's on the line. Hey, Timothy. Good morning, y'all. Yeah. How you doing? Grooving on, man. Grooving on, you know. It's <laughs> the way um, we like it. Yep, and the 31 flavors. I remember it quite well, you know. I moved out of Texas and went to California as a, as a teenager, and there was a stop. Uh, there was there was a, a 31 flavors right up the road from us, and uh, but but Howard Johnson's pistachio ice cream, buddy, I tell you what, that was one of my favorites. Yeah, I remember that one. That was a good one. We thought that was yeah. super exotic at the time. Yeah, and, and I, you know, and, and the I've best ice cream I ever con ice cream too. The, the best ice cream I've ever had was in a, in, a, 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 in Mexico in the middle of the desert. I'm driving through this canyon, and there's a sign on the side of a building that says, Crema de Yellow. And I thought about it. I said, oh, my God, that's ice cream. And we stopped in there, and there were two little Indian girls hand-cranking ice cream with uh, one, um, cantaloupe ice cream, buddy. And mm, I'll tell you what, in a 120 degree day in the, in the Baja Desert, there's just nothing to beat it. And I think about those little girls hand cranking that stuff, and it was just wonderful, you know. I mean, the, the, it was the only place in probably 40 or 50 miles at all. I mean, we're just going through this canyon, you know, coming from one section of the desert to another section, and there's this little house in the middle of nowhere with these two little girls hand cranking ice cream. Wow. Sound like two little angels from heaven in an oasis. 
Yeah. Now, there's an ice cream memory for you. Thanks for calling, Timothy. We appreciate you listening to Deep South Dining. You know, Carol, I was thinking when he was talking about the Mexico, uh, you know, Mexico has that great vanilla bean. And, yep. and, you know, those things are outrageous. So it's no surprise to me that you could get fantastic ice cream in, in Mexico. Yeah, a, cu- a couple of people on Cooking and Coping mentioned that. And for those who don't know what Cooking and Coping is, that is our we- uh, Facebook site that, site that we started during the pandemic back in March when Everybody was home and quarantined, and it has grown to now, oh, see, 2,134 members as of this morning, and it is great fun to either participate by taking photographs and telling us about what you're cooking, and this can be, some people post peanut butter sandwiches, some people post just, you know, amazing food. Or just for entertainment, you can scroll through and look at it and get hungry like I do sometimes. I know. And you and I, because we're so closely connected to it, are hungry all the time. Because we we talk about food, I don't know, six days a week, seven days a week. And and when we're not talking about it, we're on the Internet uh, coming up with ideas. Yes, and we're also cooking it. Absolutely. So, you know, this past Sunday was uh, National Ice Cream Day. And in July, as we talked about earlier, was designated by then-President Ronald Reagan as National Ice Cream Month. He did that in 1984. So it is official uh, that we are in National Ice Cream Month. Uh, and this past Sunday was National Ice Cream Day. And, uh, Carol, there are so many levels of ice cream, different types of ice cream. And we invite our listeners to ponder these different types. There's sorbet, sherbet, ice cream itself, gelato, and frozen yogurt, which is a favorite uh, with my granddaughter, uh, and she always wants to stop for frozen yogurt. I believe we got another caller on the line, Vinny from Belleville, I believe. Vinny? No? Viney, sorry. Yes. Hi. Go ahead, Viney. How y'all doing? We're doing good. We're you? good. Wonderful, wonderful. You all just bring memories back to me when my sister and I used to have to crank up that ice cream, the old fashioned kind. You have to crank up. She had a turn. I had a turn. My mom used to make the uh, for our birthdays. She always baked us a cake, and then of course we had to do the work of making the ice cream ourselves. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> Nothing like that, but I tell you, your arm sure would get tired of doing that crank, and I bet you can't even find one of those old-fashioned cans now. With the ice, you have to break up the ice and put it in there and put that ice cream salt in there so it around the ice so it would make it freeze and all. It was just quite interesting. <laughs> and you had to be careful not to let that salt, that ice cream salt, get over inside the ice cream container. Because it was ruined, if you couldn't eat it. You couldn't That's right. It. But anyway, I, I was really enjoying, uh, enjoying you all's talking when I get a chance to listen. I can remember a while back, you all had some lady on there, and she had a homemade ice cream recipe. And I could never get the opportunity to uh, remember to uh, call y'all and ask how to get that recipe. But anyway... Um, huh. uh, uh, I got to think on that one, Mal. Her name was Deborah, and she had oh, a, oh, oh yeah, Deborah ice cream, and then somebody lemonade. She, remember, she did that lemonade. Somebody did lemonade on that show that day, but that's been a while back. But I just thought of it uh, when you all mentioned it because I was throwing away some papers, and I was, of course, I shouldn't be sitting when nobody knew. I was driving down the highway, and that's oh. Listen to this. Let me write this down. I'm driving, trying to write. No, I shouldn't be doing that. That's been a <laughs> back. Well, well, Viney, we thank you for calling. We'll go back and, and look uh, back into our uh, uh, podcast and see if we can find the yeah the archive. See if we can find that uh, recipe. But Carol has a recipe right now that's an easy homemade ice cream uh, made in a bag. You don't even have yeah. to crank it. And this is 
uh, a recipe that's really great for kids this summer. It gives them something to do. It's a cooking and learning experience, and it's easy. So you take a small, resealable plastic bag, and I'm going to post this online, but you combine one cup of half and half, two tablespoons of sugar, a half teaspoon of vanilla, and then you push all the, uh, the air out of the bag. So, you know, get it as flat as you can with as little air. And then you put it into a larger resealable plastic bag. And in that bag, you put three cups of ice and a third cup of kosher salt. So, huh. are you, Malcolm, I know you have grandkids, so listen up here. Okay. You place the small bag into the big bag. And you shake it vigorously. This is the modern version of us turning the ice cream handle. You shake the bag vigorously for seven to ten minutes until the ice is hardened. Then you remove the little bag from the big bag and you enjoy your ice cream. Wow, that is great. We'll have to put that, we'll post that for anybody yeah. interested in making it who couldn't follow the the details but what a well, great idea i mean but to, to have a child occupied for seven to ten minutes shaking a bag of ice cream is a beautiful thing don't you know it i believe we got a caller we're going to get them after the break we'll get we'll get bill from uh, greenwood after the break we'll take a short break here carol and i'll come back we'll continue to talk about ice cream we'll talk about different types of ice cream different toppings my granddaughter loves the um sparkles on top of hers uh, i love a little chocolate myself but we'll talk ice cream we'll talk about recipes and your favorite memories of your favorite cream the steep south dining with carol puckett malcolm white and java chapman we'll be right back after this break If you're a parent on the go, but still want to stay informed about your children's education, subscribe to Mississippi Education Connections podcast and listen on the go anytime, anywhere on your favorite podcast app. Welcome back to Deep South Dining. Happy Monday morning. This is Malcolm White with Carol Puckett. We're glad to be on the radio this morning. We appreciate all of our listeners and callers and everybody who is plugged in. I just got a text from a friend asking for the call-in number. I guess I haven't given it as often as I should. That number is 1-877-672-7464. Be happy to hear from you. But meanwhile, back at the ranch, we've got Bill from Greenwood on the line. Hey, Bill, what's happening? Did we lose him? Bill. All right. Well, Bill has taken a break. And uh, we'll uh, just... Bill has a habit of disappearing. What was it? One one show, we lost him three times. So but he comes I'm, and he goes. He does. He comes and he goes. <laughs> But but we got Chico. We got we got Chico Harris calling in from uh, somewhere around Tupelo. And I want to wish Chico and the city of Tupelo a happy 150th birthday. Chico, what's happening? <laughs> hey, y'all. Good morning. I'm, I'm actually in Oxford, but I'm headed over to Tupelo today for the to celebrate the 150th birthday by going to Johnny's drive in for some Johnny burgers. And, of course uh, you are. Tupelo, Tupelo, Hope Tupelo you have some ice dressing. cream, Chico. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting to that part. <laughs> but I'm going to have some Johnny Burgers from Johnny's Drive-In. And because of the social distancing, I'm going to go around the corner to the Elvis Presley birthplace and sit on the front porch and eat them. But then I'm going just up the street from Johnny's to Dairy Cream. That's Tupelo's yeah. second oldest restaurant. Open since 1955. And some of the older people in Tupelo will look at you sideways and say that they like that burger better than the Johnny Burger. But I can tell you they got great soft-serve ice cream at Dairy Cream. It is a wonderful place. And it, and that's one reason it's been open since 1955. Well, Chico, here's the question du jour. Cup or cone? Oh, like you, I'm a conehead. <laughs> 
<laughs> I knew Come that. <laughs> I knew it. We knew it. Chico, what, give us a report on that place you found uh, out in the country the other day that was in what looked like a trailer. Well, that's Nikki's Cafe. It's on Kings Highway near Black Zion in Pontotoc County, on, sort of on the corner of Old Highway 6, and we haven't hit it yet. Um, oh, you I've have not hit it, it yet. Okay. No, I've been seeing it early in the morning and uh, before they're open. And I stopped the other day and, and checked it out, and I saw that they have whole catfish on the menu. So I will be going back to that place. And I'll give you a okay. full report. Hey, listen. Well, well Chico, enjoy- have some cake and ice cream for Tupelo today, and think about I- us. I really appreciated you posting that this morning. So we can eat yet more ice cream in honor of Tupelo. I shall. Maybe somebody can call in with a report from the ice cream place that's over on the North Mississippi I-55 corridor. I'm not sure if it's in Sardis or Hernando, and I haven't been there, but I've heard a lot of good reports about it. Kind of a specialty place. It's Hernando. We had somebody wrote in about that. I'm going to, I will, uh, I think it's called Area 51. (laughs) I thought it it was the Velvet Cream. Isn't there one over there? In that part yeah. of the country, hill country, called the Velvet Cream or something like that? That sounds right. That sounds right. Well, I appreciate it, I've y'all. been there. Happy it's birthday, it's terrific. Love. It's an old school uh, side of the road. Now, Chico, there used to be one on the left-hand side of the road going from Oxford over to, to Pontotoc, uh, a little one sitting right over there in a cluster of buildings, I think, before you get to, to Pontotoc. Is that one still there? I don't know that place you're talking about. You mean around Thaxon? I, I honestly don't remember exactly where it is. I've stopped there before and taken pictures. It has a sign that is a, a cone with ice cream at the top. It's on the well, left-hand sign if you're driving from Oxford to Pontotoc. Well, I just want to tell both of you guys that Su- Suzanne Spencer Van Dyke wrote in on Cooking and Coping about the Area 51 ice cream parlor in Hernando. She says all the ice cream is made fresh on site and that blueberry goat cheese ice cream is her favorite. So there, oh my God. you've heard it firsthand. There you go. I might go Check get Andrew and we go there today. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chico, we appreciate you listening as always, and we appreciate you calling in. When you get a report on that, that other little place, we'd love to hear about the whole catfish. Meanwhile, happy birthday to uh, Tupelo, Mississippi, uh, the, the home of Elvis Presley and Jack Crystal. That's and right. We have, and, and Chico Harris. <laughs> All right. I appreciate it, y'all. Y'all have a good day. All right. Did Bill ever call back, Java? No, Bill didn't call back, but we do have a whole bank of calls. We got uh, Sally Let's from Oxford up next if y'all want to talk to her. Let's talk to Sally from Oxford. Hello, Sal. Mal and Carol. Sal. Good morning. How, How are you? you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I had this random thought I had to call in about. You know, I've been thinking hot fudge sundaes and all the upside-down banana split at Seal Lily back in the day. But when you were talking about, you know, yogurt and soft serve and, and frozen ice cream, just all the different types, it made me think of the reason that I love to go to the Mississippi State Fair. And it's not for the turkey legs or the agricultural biscuits, but it's for that really mysterious pineapple whip on a cone. Mm. You remember that? Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Pineapple whip. It had a little booth, and they still do. There's only one now. You have to find it on the runway, on the midway. Okay. And it's a little okay. booth shaped like a pineapple whip on a cone, and it open, they open the top of the cone, and you have this fabulous, cool, refreshing pineapple whip now who knows Mm. what it is i mean is it an ice cream is it just a batch of chemicals but it is my (laughs) favorite i don't know sure sounds good (laughs) it is just whatever it is it sounds delicious it is the reason that i come to the mississippi state fair other than to watch you know the talent show and everything but and it usually sits by the trademark building and you have to really locate it but it's very unique and when i think about it you know especially in this 93 degree weather 
I think, mm. God, I just need some pineapple whip. But you can't find it anywhere else except the fair. Well, Sal, so, I'm just betting that next this fall when you go to the fair, there are going to be hordes around the pineapple <laughs> whip stand from your mention this morning. I know for one, I'm going. Well, maybe they'll give me a free cone. I think I deserve it. I've been a loyal customer for probably 55 years. So, you know, I might well, research it. I might research what is in pineapple whip or what is it, period. But it is on a cone, well, Malcolm, and it's, it, they do not offer a cup. So I think it would make you happy. Well, thank you so much. That's a great tip. And uh, for all these state fair goers who may or may not have a memory of the pineapple whip, uh, give us a call if you remember such a thing. Meanwhile, we're going down to the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Got a caller from Pass Christian. Who's calling, Java? Gerald from Pass Christian. Gerald from the Pass. Yes. Greetings. Um, bought my White Mountain ice cream machine, gallon and a half, in 1970. I'm still using it, and it makes great ice cream. Okay, it's it's built to last. Yes. You'll pass it for- down to, to the next generation. <laughs> It is a Absolutely. piece of art. It's, 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 it's built a great for comfort, machine. not for speed. And oh yes, it takes <laughs> twenty minutes to make the ice cream. And it's hand crank. Now, is this a hand crank? Is this a hand crank yep. or a plug in? Hand crank, twenty minutes, and I have ice cream. Wow. You still it, use the did. rock salt on top? It no, layered I do in not. There? No, I do not use I use regular salt. I find it works better than the rock salt. Oh, well there oh. you go. Now there's a hot tip for you. Yeah, uh, and uh, Gerald, you, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, is there an ice cream place uh, in and around uh, Pass Christian these days, either in the Bay or the Pass or Long Beach? They still have an ice cream place anywhere? They they do uh, the froze uh, stuff. They have that, but uh, I still like going up to Diamond Head to Dairy Queen and getting their hot fudge milkshake. I tell you what, I was there. <laughs> Uh, at the uh, Dairy Queen in um, in Diamond Head two weeks ago, uh-huh. and 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 I got um, uh, 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 a blizzard, I believe is what yeah. they call them, yeah, yeah, right. with uh, Reese's Buttercup, and it was fantastic. I still like a blizzard, Carol. What about you? Yep, <laughs> I love a, a blizzard, but it it makes me want to head down the highway and go to Diamond Head anyway. Yeah. Uh, and I, the hot fudge blizzard with pecans uh, is the um, epitome or epitome <laughs> of the blizzards for me. <laughs> well, Gerald, uh, thanks again thank for you. giving us a call sure and, and uh, for sharing about your ice cream maker. Carol, that should warm your heart. It does. Anybody from past Christian and the Gulf Coast area, that warms my heart. I'm a coast girl. That's right. Well, we appreciate the call. We appreciate our listeners. Job, we got more people going to take a break. It's time for a break. All right, this will be our last break, I do believe, of the show today. We would be happy to hear from listeners who want to talk about ice cream, memories uh, about ice cream, either making it or consuming it with family and friends. Uh, you can give us a call at one eight seven seven mpb ring That's one 672 7464 Or we'd be happy to see an email from you to food at mpb online.org. Carol and I will come right back. we got a lot of callers. We're looking forward to more conversation about ice cream. You scream. We all scream for ice cream. On Southern Remedy Healthy and Fit, you get information about foods you should eat to stay in good health and tips on how to stay active. I'm Dr. Josie Bidwell, host of Southern Remedy Healthy and Fit, an associate professor of preventive medicine at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Listen to the show every Monday at 11 or subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy with your preferred podcasting app. Welcome back to Deep South Dining. Malcolm White here with Carol Puckett. It's a beautiful Monday here in the heart of the summertime and the best time ever for ice cream. We got Debbie on the phone. Debbie's calling from Wesson, Mississippi. Hello, Debbie. How are you? Hi, Malcolm. How are you? Hi, Debbie. Well. Hi, Carol. Okay, three things. I've made ice cream for over 50 years. 
if you go back to your recipe for what you were saying for kids for the vanilla ice cream to make in the plastic bag, I think you'll find that your sugar to salt ratio is reversed. Oh. Oh, okay. you are so right. Okay. We, a third a cup of kosher salt would that be, would be rough. I love you, Debbie. Thank you. <laughs> okay, pineapple whip is a combination of pineapple bits. Vanilla ice cream and uh, frozen whipped topping. Ah, Sal, I'm I hope also you heard willing that. to make a road trip for ice cream if anyone around this area wants to ride. Okay, <laughs> you're putting together an ice cream tour, is what you're telling us. Well, I can only do a day trip. I have pets. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, if anybody wants to go on an ice cream safari. With Debbie from Wesson, day trip only, she's up for it. Just give us a call or give her a call or give the station a call, and we'll see what we can do to facilitate that. Debbie, thanks so much for correcting our recipe. We got a little sideways there. All right, now we go to Jackson, Mississippi. We got DeMatt on the phone. Hey, man. How y'all doing? Good. Hey, DeMatt. Thanks for calling in. I I read your uh, comment on cooking and coping this morning and i had forgotten that you have or have you have an ice cream club well i i did um it's it's kind of an ironic story i had uh i had this kind of monthly subscription where uh folks would sign up or gift a subscription and once a month you got a pint of ice cream and the point was that there were no repeats uh and uh, it was going for about three years. Uh, you know, we had a checking account. A lot of we were, ice cream. Yes. Yeah. I had to buy a deep freeze and I had to buy more uh, churns. But, uh, but you know, we were registered with the Secretary of State. We paid taxes. We had a checking account. And then, uh, and then I got uh, a wonderful job with the State Department of Health, who oversees the cottage food industry. And was told that <laughs> what I was doing could not be done. <laughs> God, I love breaking the law when you know you're doing the right thing. <laughs> so, you know, I just do it uh, in my spare time. Oh, it was always it was always a side project. So, but yeah, I still do it. And uh, and some of the inspirations that I got from it is the uh, I would keep kind of a running list of how to come up with new things. You know, for example, like, gosh, this is delicious tiramisu. How can I make this into an ice cream? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, like, God, this, this king cake is delicious. How can I make it into an ice cream? And then, uh, you know, fruit, of course, you know. You know, it's great to do the seasons, you know, blueberries, raspberries, fresh cherries, peaches. But then also uh, cocktails are a great uh, one. We when we still had the subscription service, we we had kind of a subscriber's choice, and it was you know vote on your favorite, and I'll do it again. And the one that won was old fashioned, which was oh. whiskey, cooked down cherries, and orange zest. An old fashioned ice cream. Now there's an idea. What a great <laughs> idea. Well, Matt, we man, we really appreciate you calling. Good luck with your uh, illegal business there. Well, um, it's, it's no longer a going concern, so we're in the clear. <laughs> <laughs> but you have a great idea. friends. Yeah. Uh, we, we love an entrepreneur. And so thanks, thanks for listening. Thanks for calling. And thanks for always participating in cooking and coping. We appreciate it. All right. We, I'm sorry. Now, I was saying that we have a lot of callers, but I know Carol wanted to share a story. Um, yeah, Carol's got a story. Here. Well, I hate to take a caller off the, off the phone, so I'm, I'm going to just make this quick. But I actually had an ice cream celebrity stay at, at my house. And when you think of celebrities who go just by one name, you know, think Prince, Madonna. Elvis. Cher, Java. <laughs> I had Jerry of Ben and Jerry's ice cream stay at wow. my house. He, he was here for a book signing. He was originally from Merrick, Long Island. And back in 1969, 
a little a group of guys that worked on the newspaper there communicated with a gu- bunch of people at Yazoo City High School. You know how you get each other's newspapers? Right. And the boys of Merrick wrote some not very nice, very snide letters to the good people at Yazoo City High School, which ended in some friendships that have lasted a lifetime. But on a lark, three of the guys jumped in a Volkswagen bug and headed to Yazoo City, Yazoo City, Mississippi. And a Mississippi writer named Ruth Williams wrote about the unlikely friendship between these two groups. And uh, Jerry and Ben Cohen, who the Ben have been in Jerry's, were part of that group. Wow. So he came, I, I told Ruth Williams, I said, well, he probably has enough room, I mean, enough money for a hotel and she said, look, these guys, you know, these like, these are the kind of guys that stay in people's houses. They're, they're not going to spend money for a hotel. But what a great guy. But he came in the front door with one of those little rolling carts filled with boxes of ice cream. I do love Ben and Jerry's. They, what a great American success story. And I've had the great pleasure of going to Stowe, Vermont, and touring the plant on a couple of occasions. we got some more callers on the line, Java. Who we got? we got a few more minutes here. Yeah, let's talk with uh, Amy from Brandon. This is a friend of yours, Carol. Hey, oh, Amy. good. Morning, guys. Amy out here in Brandon. Listen, love the show. Uh, I oh, want to talk about a second, I... but um, y'all know my roots are in DeSoto County. I actually grew up nine miles out of Hernando, between Hernando and Tunica. And uh, I just want to add one thing to your DeSoto County list. Carol, you're both right. Area 51 is a wonderful new ice cream place in Hernando. The Velvet Cream sits on the beginning of the ice cream trail, which is Highway 51. Um, but about eight miles above that, there's a place in Nesbitt, and all you have to do is get off the interstate, get on Highway 51, and look for Happy Days, D-A-Z-E. Uh, the first place in DeSoto County to sell banana ice cream, which uh, earned it a trip from the Whitten family every Sunday afternoon. So um, wow. I, I really wow. believe we could have an ice uh, cream And, and I, I really appreciate you telling us this because, you know, Malcolm has helped with the Blues Trail, the Riders Trail, the Civil Rights Trail, and Malcolm, I think, the ice cream trail is another opportunity. Could be next. Could be next. Thank you so well, much you, for calling you, in. We appreciate you, you uh, be, being job. tied into us and part of the family. We got time for one more job or we got to go. Let's uh, talk to Bill from Greenwood. You got 30 seconds, Bill. What's going on? Let it hey, rip. Uh, how, how you doing? Uh, like I said, uh, that uh, Timothy, great story. Uh, well, when, when we used to ride around in, in the old days, my daddy, we never stop at Howard Johnson's, but he finally stopped there. And uh, I was expecting like two or three scoops. They only gave me one scoop, and he said, he said, you're only going to get one scoop, because they charge about like 15 cents a scoop. So whenever we go back there, he only give me one. But uh, can you give me a recipe uh, where you can just put the mixture in the freezer and then freeze it and then have, didn't have, don't have to crank it or put it into an electric crank? Any kind of recipe for that? Bill's looking for the lazy man or lazy woman's uh, ice cream there where you don't have to crank, you don't have to shake, you don't have to do anything but make it and throw it in the freezer. Carol, what are we going to do with that? Malcolm, I think we're going to have to come up with that on another day. I'll do yep. some research for Bill and uh, maybe post it on our website or next time we talk to him. Well, it's been fun. Thank you all so much for tuning in, listening to Deep South Dining. Carol and I have had a blast. Java, thank you so much. And all the staff back there at MPB Think Radio. Our show is produced uh, uh, by Mississippi Public Broadcasting's Think Radio. We are funded by generous contributions from folks like you. The show was magnificently produced by Java Chapman. Carol Puckett and I appreciate each and every one of you tuning in, listening, participating in Cooking and Coping. I'm Malcolm White. Stay tuned now for Now You're Talking with Marshall Ramsey, followed by Southern.